me, Sam's Trains here, welcome to the railway and welcome to another review of a train pack and it's been ages since I've done a train pack so I'm looking forward to this one and uh, this is what train pack it is, obviously you can't tell at all because uh, all these boxes are the same I think. So I'll flip this over so that you can see exactly what it is we're looking at today and there's a little label down here that says that it is R2173 BR14XX locomotive train pack and it says a little bit here, it just says a few words about their train packs, it just says locomotives and coaches in the Hornby match train series are where possible correctly matched in period and livery with special points of identification to simulate the details of the prototype. So, uh, yep, yeah, that's just a bit of spiel, isn't it, really? So let's have a quick look at uh, what you get inside this train pack. So I'm just going to get the lid off then and show you what we get. All right, first of all, then, you can see the locomotive here, the beautiful 14XX locomotive. And I know lots and lots of people wanted me to review this. Uh, including Cameron Island, Oliver, the Great Western Locomotive, Michael King, Chloe Amy, loads of people love them to name but a few, so uh, that is that. And then of course you've got some things which are called auto coaches. Now for those of you who don't know, and I'm no expert, uh, as far as I understand it, auto coaches allow similar operation to the sort of modern trains allow today, where the driver can sit at either the front or the back of the train to control it. Except here, of course, you have a cab at the opposite end of the, of the train to the locomotive, and then <laughs> it's a bit straight. I think they have sort of pulleys and chains and such so that the locomotive is connected to the cab at the opposite end of the train. Now I don't really know the ins and outs of this because presumably you would still need the fireman to sit in the locomotive and keep an eye on the coal and the water levels and the gauges and all that sort of thing. And uh, the other thing I don't understand with this, and I'm sure there's a simple explanation for it, but why is there two auto coaches? And each of them is the same, it's, they've both got a cab at each end, but surely if the locomotive is at one end of the train, then if the train wanted to go in that direction, the driver should just sit in the locomotive and not try to sit in a cab behind the locomotive and not be able to see where he's going. Yeah, I don't know, maybe the train would go in the middle of the train, goodness knows, I really don't know. But if any of you guys do, uh, let me know, because obviously I am quite ignorant with these things. Anyway, let's get this out then and see what it's like. Um, so I'll open it up at this end. Here we go. And there are a couple of detail packs which come with this set, uh, so I'm going to look at those quickly, there's quite a story to tell. Alright, so these things are actually the handrails for the coaches. Now, one of them is open, it's not that one. I did open this one, because I did try to fit them. Whoa, one of them's gone. <laughs> anyway, it doesn't matter, they're horrid anyway. Uh, let me tell you about them. So yeah, people were saying, would you please fit the detail packs? Well, I did try, I must admit, but it, they looked absolutely awful on the coaches. Here's a little clip of when I'd fitted them. For some reason, they just stuck out massively, and I couldn't push them in any further because there were only shallow holes. So they looked absolutely ridiculous, and I just thought, you know what, I'm not, gonna fit, I'm not even going to try and fit the rest. So I'm not fitting those, uh, they are the handrails which go on the coaches here, of course, but uh, yeah, uh, not good, not good, so I'm not bothering with that, but I did try. Okay, let's have a look at the loco then, it's uh, 042, which is very unusual, there it is, very nicely little uh, detailed model there, and uh, I will review that for you in uh, a lot more detail in just a second, but let's have a look at the auto coaches then, and they are both the same except the running number. And uh, I'll just see if I can see where that uh, other handrail went. Oh, I can see it. It's in, it's in the next one. Okay, so there it is. This one is W195W, which of course stands for Western, Western Region. And uh, this end is not the end with the cab, but this end is, as you can see. And there's a sort of bell on the front. So we'll look at these coaches in a little more detail anyway in a second. And here's the other one. Uh, this is just a slightly different running number. I think it's got a, a 9.4 instead of a 9.5. Exactly the same. No cab at one end, cab at the other end. So there you go. That is uh, the auto coaches. So I'm going to review these then. Um, I'll start with the loco, of course. And uh, yep, yeah, hopefully you'll enjoy that. But for now, here is a little bit of history and information on the 14 XX. So the 14 XX was originally known as the 4800 class and it was introduced in 1932 to the Great Western Railway to the design of Charles Collett. A total of 75 of the class were built over four years and were eventually reclassified to the 14 XX when some of the 2800 class, which were in fact uh, 280 locomotives, were experimentally converted for oil firing. These were then classified as the 4800 class instead. 
The 14 X was designed specifically to use these auto coaches, though actually they were never that successful apparently, and the 14 Xs were eventually scrapped from 1956 onwards. Four have been preserved though, and the rest were sadly scrapped, which is a shame. So there she is then, the beautiful Hornby 14 X, and I'm 90% sure that this is based on the much older Airfix version, the Airfix tooling. And that one was very well known and also very well hated because its method of pickups from the tracks and the wheels was very, very strange. And also the running mechanism was pretty dodgy as well. Now I've had this one apart and I must admit I think it's been very heavily updated because uh, the running mechanism and the pickups and whatnot are much, much better on this. And another thing that has been updated quite significantly is the paintwork and the livery. As you can see, all the lining, including this on the boiler, uh, has been done in this sort of double or triple banding with the orange and the black. And on the side of the tanks there, you can see the livery is much more sophisticated uh, than on the Airfix one, if you're familiar with that. And in fact, the paintwork generally seems to be very, very well done. As you can see, the British Railways crest, uh, lake crest there, very, very nicely applied. The running number on the side of the tank as well, very nicely done. And look, you've even got the running number on the smoke box door there, which is nice. Having said that, the separately fitted detail and the sort of molded detail is, as far as I can tell, uh, the same as the Airfix version. And that isn't really a bad thing either because it is pretty good. So you can see there's rivets everywhere. You've got uh, separately fitted water caps. I think those are, aren't they? Something to do with the filling mechanism. You've got the separately fitted handrails. You've got the turned metal buffers, which aren't sprung, but uh, that's not a problem. And you've also got the separately fitted whistles there, just in front of the safety valves here, um, which are plastic, but uh, nicely painted nonetheless. You have quite a bit of moulded detail as well, including this sort of pipe, which I thought was a crack originally, <laughs> which is quite funny. You know, Hornby, is it well detailed or just cracked? Nobody knows. But yeah, as you can see, generally a very nice model. Um, I, have, <laughs> I don't know if I've got time to show you all of the detail, but yeah, it is very good. No cab detail, unfortunately, in fact, no cab of any kind, but you know, uh, it's only a small model and uh, it was quite a, a cheap model when it first came out as well, so I suppose that is why. The coal bunker is fairly good as well, as you can see, the coal is fairly, fairly fine scale. It's not great, but it's not bad. And around the back, as you can see, there is a fair bit of moulded detail there, as well as a separately fitted vacuum pipe, and the same is also true for the front buffer beam as well. Okay, so that is the 14 X. just a quick look, and uh, you'll see it more later on when it runs. But now I thought I would show you one of the auto coaches very briefly. So there it is then, one of the Western Region auto coaches, and uh, yes, it hasn't got the hideous uh, handrails fitted. And I do apologise if it was just me fitting them wrong, by the way, because that is very possible. But yeah, I couldn't work out how to make them look decent. Um, whether it was me or not, uh, I've left them off. Anyway, it seems to be quite a nicely detailed model. We'll look at the livery and lining first. It is in this lovely sort of maroon colour, and the lining on it is very, very nicely done as well. As you can see, here's a section of it. It does have the banding with the black in between the yellow stripes there, so uh, that is beautiful. The running number is very nicely applied as well. As you can see, no complaints there. And inside, there is a fair bit of detail, as you can see. Uh, there are some chairs there. Uh, not a lot, but uh, you know enough to say that there is an interior. The bogies are very, very nicely detailed as well. You can see there's all manner of moulded detail on there. And around the front, if you have a look at the cab, you can see there is that uh, bell, which I'm not sure whether it's separately fitted or not, actually. I'm not too sure. But also metal buffers, which is a nice touch as well. Around the back, there is a lot of moulded detail, as you can see as well, which is nice to see. And on the top, as you can see, there are... I'm, not, I'm never sure what these things are, these lumps, <laughs> like little growths on the top. I'm sure they're not growths, but you know what I mean. Uh, so yeah, if you know what those are, uh, do let me know, because I'm not very knowledgeable on coaches. Um, but there we go, that is the auto coach. I hope you enjoyed seeing that. Uh, the other one, as I was saying earlier, is just the same with a different running number, so I won't go over that in the same way. But let's get it all down onto the track, and we will see how the 14 X runs with them. So there she is then, the Hornby 14 X down onto the layout, ready to be tested. And she's about to couple up to, of course, both of her auto coaches. Now, I was half persuaded just to let her couple to one, and then maybe put the other one onto this Airfix uh, 14 X because I'm not, again, sure whether they did pull two. I'm not sure you guys will have to let me know if you do know. But yeah, the Airfix one is coupled up to three regular Great Western coaches. So hopefully you'll enjoy seeing that one. And then on the inner line, I have the Great Western uh, pannier tank without the cab. And uh, she is coupled up to some pork wagons, of course, with a towed brake van on the end. 
Nonetheless, let's see how this 14XX fares on their slow speed test. Now, she does run a pair of traction tyres, which does help her with traction, of course, but she doesn't have very many wheels. She's only got uh, three wheels on each side, so she really does find it difficult to pick up power sometimes, especially on these express points, which are just here. Uh, so we'll see if she gets over those. But let's give her a little bit of juice then and uh, see how this goes. As you can see, no complaints there with the slow speed. I'm just going to turn the camera slightly so that when she hits those express points we will see whether she cuts out or not. I mean, most likely she will, but we will see. Nope. She made it. Wow. Well, that is impressive then, isn't it? I mean, she's probably much better for just having... Oh, no. Oh, no, I've said that. She has stopped. There we go. As I was about to say, she's probably much better for just having had a service. Um, I did service her before this video, so uh, that's probably part of the reason. But uh, nonetheless, that is still a very, very good performance. Anyway, let's get her to couple up to her auto coaches then. Nice and steadily does it for the coupling. There we go. And let's bring her forward then. Obviously, she shouldn't struggle with just two coaches. And no, she seems to have gotten those very nicely. Okay, let's give the Airfix version a quick try then. And this one, unfortunately, isn't quite as smooth and quiet, but she still runs reasonably well. There we go. Quite a good puller as well. And last but not least, the pannier tank. And here she goes then with her pork. Lots of pork. Okay, enjoy the running session and see if you can figure out which of the other locomotives in the sidings are the odd ones out. But the Hornby one certainly is a beautiful runner. You know, I say what you like about traction tyres. I'll be the first to say I absolutely hate them. But she does run well, and at the end of the day, that's all that matters. So, uh, yes, not a bad performer, really. Not bad at all. And the Airfix one's not doing too badly either, but she is a little bit worse on the points. Um, I did have a stall a few times when I was testing her, but yeah, like I was saying earlier, it's just the pickups, they're sort of brush type pickups, very, very strange things, and they, they do seem to work when they work, if you know what I mean, but not quite so good when they don't work. And that pannier tank, again, quite an old Hornby model, that one. Still a very good and quiet runner though. One of my smoothest, it really is. And now for my ratings then on the 14 X train pack. First of all, detail 7 out of 10. The detail that is there is very, very good. But you know, there isn't any cab detailing and there's no glazed windows. So things like that do bring it down a little bit for me. And performance 7 out of 10. While she can do a great slow performance, she does have a pair of traction tyres, which means that she isn't really that great at picking up electricity from the track, which means that she can cut out over points occasionally. Nonetheless, the character is fantastic, so I've given it 10 out of 10 there. And the build quality is also pretty good as well, so 9 out of 10. I paid £55 for the entire set, so for that I think you've got to give it 10 out of 10. Which gives her overall 8.36 out of 10. And if I put her into the ranking, that leaves her 10th, just below the T9 and above the Krusty 9F. So let me know what you thought of the ratings anyway. I'd hate to be too harsh on these things, but I do do my best. And also do let me know what you think about whether the 14 X should be pulling two coaches or not. I'm not 100% sure, but uh, I don't know very much about these things in the first place. So uh, if you do know, of course, please let me know in the comments.
Anyway folks, I think that is just about it for my review of the 14XX train pack. If you did enjoy the video, please feel free to let me know in the comments and uh, we can have a chat because I do love it when you get in touch. And also if you'd like to, please feel free to check out the Facebook or Twitter pages and they're at facebook.com forward slash samstrains or twitter.com forward slash samstrains. It would be lovely to see you on there. But for now, thank you very much for your company as always. Very lovely to have you here. And I'll see you back here very soon, hopefully. So uh, that should do it for now, and I'll see you very soon. Cheers, everybody.